Greetings and a warm welcome from me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today in the latest of my deep dive videos, I'm going to explore the journey of the slinky, sensuous Venus through the free-spirited sign of Sagittarius. This begins on the 29th of December and goes on for 25 days. What are the themes of Venus through its rulership of Taurus, of Libra? How does it feel in the sign of Sagittarius? What is it asking us to experience? What can we likely expect? I'm going to take a look at the event chart because that's going to tell us the other planetary influences feeding into Venus and its journey as it begins in Sagittarius. And also, I'm going to look at the key influences that are going to be developing during that period. Finally, I will go through each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavour of what you can expect in terms of your sun or your ascendant. The choice is yours. If you've yet to check out your year 2024 deep dive zodiac special for each of the 12 signs, please see the link beneath this video. Also, with year 2024 almost upon us, if you've yet to order your personal astrology forecast for the new year, if you take advantage of my special offer of 30% off, please see the link below. You'll also get your character analysis totally unique to you. This shows your birth influences interacting with the moving planets in the sky. But also within that, you'll get your free zodiac forecast, your free Chinese and your free Indian horoscope forecast for all of the 12 signs. Uh, and please see the link below for more. So Venus over the last 25 days has been making her way through the sign of Scorpio, where she is in detriment. And that began on December the 4th. Now, you may have found in the run up to Christmas from the 18th to the 23rd of December, that things were a little bit chaotic when it came to your love life or even your approach to finances because Venus went face to face with the erratic energies of Uranus. Venus moving into Sagittarius therefore, sees us much more mindful to understand the truth of our relationships. The ninth house, Sagittarius energy, very much about the higher purpose. But those Venus themes, let's just have a think about Taurus. It's of course an earth sign, very, very sensual, but it's fixed, so a little bit of inflexible, but it's very much about everyday money, self-worth, also our values, our appreciation of food and creature comforts, those calorific goodies that we've perhaps been enjoying over the festivities. But also it gives us an appreciation of fashion, crafting and home hobbies, home cooking. In terms of Libra, of course it's an air sign, so very much about communication. So whereas Earth wants to see practical results, with the Libra and energy it's more about how we link to others. But it's a cardinal sign, so it's very powerful. It's about initiation. Here it's about relating, harmony, equilibrium, partnerships, diplomacy, presentation, flattery, but also, ironically, insincerity, I feel. Now, Venus in Sagittarius, it's a free-spirited sign, as I mentioned before, very much the truth seeker. So we want to understand the higher truths of our relationships. Maybe with that Venus transition through Scorpio, there has been some tension, but also a lot of sexual uh, attraction. But if you're wanting to know whether a relationship can really play a role in your longer term future, you're going to explore that through this next 25 days. Because Venus in Sagittarius can also be about independence. So because both Scorpio and Taurus are fixed signs, maybe we felt locked into something that felt so intense, but also obsessive. Now, if a relationship isn't really working, Venus moving into Sagittarius can see us wanting to find the truth of the relationship or break free. But it can give us an appreciation of travel and different cultures. And so if you are going to be heading off somewhere, perhaps with someone you are really close to, it can be a wonderful jaunt. You could even find yourself thinking about overseas property or investments because Sagittarius energy very much about borders, and travel 
and of course the uh, part of Venus that is to do with money could be a link there. Now on the screen now I'm showing you the event chart based on a solar perspective. So the ascendant at naught degrees Aries on the vernal point, which of course puts Venus in the ninth house. Now the thing you can see straight away, and it's so important on this particular transit that we're going to all experience over the next weeks, is that square with Saturn. So Saturn in the sign of Pisces, not its happiest place, pushing us all to work much harder at understanding the emotional and spiritual dimension. And we could be a little bit reluctant with this Sagittarius energy. So I feel that if you are in a relationship where it's much more difficult to get the other party to open up about how they feel, that can definitely be a point of tension. But you can also see that Venus is in a quincunx with, uh, with Jupiter. Now that's really interesting because of course Jupiter rules the sign of Sagittarius. So here we've got 9-2. So if we are hitting the winter sails, it may be very, very difficult to find a balance between our budget and what we really desire. But there is a lovely link between Venus and Pluto. Pluto very late in Capricorn, about to move into Aquarius on the 21st of January. But that particular influence helps us to appreciate who we are really bound to in a very profound way. But the other thing to look out for is the other planets in the sign of Sagittarius. And of course it's Mercury and it's retrograde and Mars in a conjunction. And guess what? They're scoring up to Neptune also in the sign of Pisces. So the potential for distortion when we're truth seekers is very strong. So you could encounter someone where you're trying very hard to be very open and very frank, the Sagittarius energy, and somehow or another, they're finding the ways in which to evade the examination of your piercing uh, desire for that knowledge. Because the sign of Sagittarius is about knowledge. So there could be some tricky relationships that we're all going to go through, but equally we can turn these uh, ninth, twelfth house influences collectively to our advantage by the things that we do feel very vulnerable about or that are delicate or old hurts, that we do ventilate them, Venus and Sagittarius, talk them through and then release them. So there is an opportunity. We don't have to just receive these energies in a negative way. Now in the event chart based on Placidus and Greenwich, uh, the ascendant is 27 degrees Leo, which means the overlay is mainly, of course, in Virgo. Here, ironically, Venus and also Mercury are in house four. Now that's much more tender, it's much more about our emotional security, but Saturn is in the seventh house. So really interesting, it doesn't necessarily, I feel from this event chart, mean that Venus can only be working and operating around a romantic dimension. It could be around a family, uh, relationship or an extended family relationship where someone is proving pretty difficult uh, they're not opening up and that desire to to really have a freer conversation could be resisted but also we can see that venus is in that quincunx with jupiter in house nine how ironic is that because of course jupiter very ninth house orientated so we do splash out it could be on some stuff for the home because that is going to give us a sense of, of support. But that need for abundance could be something that we take to the nth degree and splash out a bit more than we can truly afford. Now the sextile with Pluto is more complex because it's a fourth, fifth. So it just suggests around romantic relationships, the fifth house, if we can be in touch with how we feel and authentic about our feelings, not fearful of them. That's good. Sagittarian energy can be a bit of an avoider of emotions. It likes to have the big debate. It's not so good at the tender stuff. And you can see that Mercury in its retrograde is in the fourth, Mars in the fifth, but they are conjunct, so that can make us defensive. You know, if someone starts to, uh, uh, to peer into something that we find tricky, our response could be uh, rather reactionary because Mars in... Uh, that combination with Mercury can be outspoken, but actually it could be a bit of a smokescreen for how we really feel. 
and Neptune in house eight where we're most deeply invested financially or emotionally again drifting dreaming and can distort so Mercury and Mars together squaring up with Neptune is one of the trickster influences uh, that you can possibly get in astrology so if you have got to know someone recently and they're proving very evasive or elusive you can't really get them to open up about what their history is or what their true circumstances is are i really would proceed with caution now from pretty well the start of this influence of course we've got the square with saturn but just so you know it's exact on the 1st of january but it goes on to the 4th of january now mercury is going to be squaring up within three degrees to neptune through to the 12th of january so there is going to be some sluggish but distorting energies as we go into the new year but on the 15th of january there's a delightful link between venus and the north node in aries if ever there was a time to really reach that sweet spot and, and be, you know, and really say how we feel in a very passionate way with both in fire signs, it's going to be in the middle of January. But there is a square between Venus and Neptune. So Venus catches up with Mercury and Mars. Obviously, Mars is going to be moving into Capricorn on the 7th of January. And we're also going to have Mercury moving into Capricorn on the 14th of January. So when I say catch up, I mean it gets into the square that those two have been in and it's squaring up to Neptune from the 17th to the 23rd with the exact position on the 19th. So what's Venus square Neptune? Well, we could encounter someone who just really seems to be the real deal. You know, when it comes to the love language, they have all the words that we want to hear. It can be very, very seductive and very persuasive. It could even be a holiday romance. The holiday romance is also possible through this whole Venus transition. Uh, and that may be just what we want. That little bit of pash, but without any much of a commitment. Venus, free-spirited Sagittarius. But whatever we do, we'll have an emotional outcome through this period, this 25 days. So we need to be aware of that fiery energy, the need for truth, freedom, movement. But at the same time, if we are invested, it has to feel right. And if we are getting to know someone, even for some fleeting fun, the terms of reference need to be clear. And I would say that it's entirely possible that you could encounter someone who actually hasn't necessarily got any desire for a longer term uh, fling. They just want something that is more transactional or more fleeting. So just bear that in mind. But if you are in a very complex family or emotional or romantic relationship this next few weeks is really going to be interesting there are going to be some tension points but it could tease into the open some very valuable uh, openness which you know even if Sagittarius energy can be a bit frank and difficult to be on the end of ultimately it is usually coming from a position of uh, a higher purpose even if sometimes it can come from a desire to just be right. And that's something that comes from the Jupiterian energy. So we just need to be aware of that. Now, please stay with me as I go through each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavor of what you can expect for your particular sign. So Aries, if you are jetting off for some winter snow or some sun, or you have an opportunity to just have some moments away or just some time out, it's a great chance for you to really appreciate your freedom. So if you're not currently in a love relationship, although there may have been some poignant moments over the festive holidays, always a difficult time not to be involved in a happy alliance. You can think very uh, nostalgically about past alliances that are no longer in our lives. You are free, so treasure that. But whatever your situation in terms of relationship or money, what Venus in Sagittarius gives you the chance to do is take an honest look at it. But you've got to do that with an awareness of those two planets in Pisces. Now, this sounds like it's very much in keeping with the overall forecast. But, you know, since Saturn moved into your 12th house on the 7th of March, he really has been asking you very intently to finish off some things that weren't working so even if you've still been grieving for something that had had its 
special place in your heart, it's probably best to become more uh, more sanguine and more accepting that some things in life just do have uh, their day. And what you have an opportunity to do with this particular influence is start to engineer in your mind with a sense of excitement about how you can be more experimental in the year ahead. But it's possible that Saturn and Neptune are in some ways operating some um, some self-limiting thinking or behaviour. And if you can become much more conscious of those, for example, not quite valuing yourself, Venus, value, self-worth, that's not useful. Uh, if you are someone who really likes your pattern of life to be pretty calibrated, then Venus here is asking you to be uh, a lot more experimental and a lot more uh, spontaneous. Aries people have uh, a reputation of making dramatic moves but of course you could have planets in Pisces you could have them in Taurus which would make you a very different type of Aries so it just depends on your unique circumstances but taking an honest look at your situation appreciating your freedom if you've got it if you're in a relationship where you feel a bit cramped try to flex because Sagittarius is a mutable sign, so try to find the ways to create your own space, to pursue your own hobbies and interests, because that will breathe life into your relationship. But if there are some tender strands that do need to be discussed, this next three or four weeks is going to be the time you do it in earnest. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Taurus, for you, the interesting thing about Venus moving through Sagittarius is that it really throws up the more passionate potential of intimacy. The eighth house is sizzling hot. Now you've had a 25-day period of that with Venus in Scorpio as well. And maybe when Venus went face-to-face -face with Uranus in your sign, it did ask you some questions about how connected you wanted to be or how much you wanted your own space. Maybe a relationship's been a bit off and on. Venus moving into the eighth house gives you an opportunity to actually forge it deeper, particularly with it linking so productively to Pluto, the planet of transformations. But that's for you in your sector of higher truths at the moment. Of course, Venus can be about money too, and the eighth house can be about longer term investments. So because of the angle that Venus forges to Saturn, which can be about property, if you are thinking about uh, putting your money into something with a, a, a view to m making some income from it, future forwards, you really, really need to check the small print. And that is because Mercury can be about uh, the conversation, but also it's very much about commerce and it's in retrograde close to Mars, which could see a bit more impulsive, squaring up with Neptune. So the detail of anything you're discussing needs to be examined in a very precise way. Now, what about if you're a single um, Taurus? Well, the chances are that Venus moving through this part of your situation is going to rev up your desire. But because of the planets in your 11th house of friendship, is there someone you're going to be drawn into? Perhaps with a friends with benefits type arrangement? Entirely possible. But because Saturn can be limiting and Neptune can be deceptive, that may be actually quite hurtful to the deeper parts of your nature because Venus in the 8th house wants something very deep. And so if you wanted something very deep and the other person didn't, that actually could be quite hurtful to you. On the other hand, you may be completely pragmatic about it and that might work for you entirely perfectly. But Venus in the eighth house really gives you a chance to explore the themes of devotion, but also of, of deep uh, connection, of deep intimacy. So uh, sexuality at a very, very... A profound level where we're joining together with another person in a very very intimate way if you're with someone that you do see your future with I don't think those influences in Pisces are going to be so much of an issue if you're with someone where you're unsure there may be a big conversation you need to have over the next few weeks so if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep 
dive video. Please see the link beneath this video. So Gemini, for you, Venus has moved into your seventh house. Venus loves being in the seventh house. Here it can be very coquettish. It is able to flex into uh, the other person's needs. It can listen well, uh, be very attuned and very receptive. So very, very enabling. So Venus in the seventh house gives you an opportunity to celebrate the things you have in common. So if you are in a relationship, whether it's a professional tie within the family or in a personal context, where it's not all honky-dory, Saturn, uh, then at least what you may do is decide to take from it what you can. If, however, you're in a professional relationship, particularly where you feel that whatever you do and however hard you try to impress or please, it just is never going to get any particular response that's warm or encouraging, and you're someone who needs that kind of interaction, you need to be thinking about the role that you have. And of course, with your ruler Mercury in retrograde, in uh, your seventh house all sorts of relationships at the moment are under the astral microscope so whether you're in one free of one thinking about people at work that you don't like or neighbors that are difficult or you work in a community where some people you like whatever complexities they are even if it's in some kind of professional association the issues of dominance saturn in the tenth house whether someone finds that you want things all on your terms and you need to be the 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 the, uh, the the prime mover, or it's in a professional situation. You never really know what the other person wants or what your company wants because Neptune means it's always changing, moving, never really clear. That could be very frustrating for you. The seventh house isn't just about relating. It's also where we set our boundaries. It's also where we compete. And that there is no doubt about it with Venus's help. You can definitely use charm as a major weapon to uh, gain traction in your professional situation over the next few weeks. That will work better than the more abrasive energies of Mars in its combination with Mercury, which could see you edgier, a bit more defensive. And if you want to avoid those jagged edges, it's perhaps an acceptance that rarely do we get everything on our own terms. But what you can ask is to make sure that the things that are important to you, that your minimum standards are met. And that's where the seventh house is great for, for boundaries. Uh, also, it can be the sector of, of, uh, of open enemies. So you may encounter someone over the next few weeks that you know you've got to kind of work with in some ways and they know it as well, but you can collaborate because it's actually for the greater good of all concerned. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Cancer, as Venus moved through Scorpio for you, it was a wonderful opportunity to showcase your personality. Because Mercury and Mars have been in Sagittarius for a while, perhaps you've been meeting up and socialising more with people that you work with. But Venus moving into the sixth house is a really interesting one because as much as the fifth house is marriage, the sixth house is very practical. So yes, we can have romance in relationships, but the best relationships probably will work most of all through thoughtful, but consistently thoughtful gestures. And of course, actions speak louder than words. So, you know, when we do that, uh, gesture in the domestic sphere uh, to take a, a little roll off someone if they're feeling a little bit below par it really does help and the same can be true of our professional relationships now of course you're someone who can be very astute around understanding people's emotions and here over the next few weeks this is your chance to to really be conscious if you can uh, take a bit of slack but there's going to be another part of you cancer that's really resistant to making any kind of compromise on your personal freedom and that's because saturn is in your ninth house and has since march the uh, 7th been making you very much more conscious that if you've been too doing too much for people for too long you need to be guarding those uh, boundaries of you yours much more preciously because if we give and give and give, we end up feeling rather uh, uh, rather deprived of any vitality. But Venus moving into the sixth house, if you're single, 
great opportunity to go to the gym as we go into the new year. That would be a great chance to meet somebody new. You could meet someone at work as well. And it's good to be a little bit sacrificing, but if you're the main giver on the domestic sphere, I think it's about getting other people to pitch in to help you because that's going to help your sense of peace of mind and your mood more than anything at all. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. Welcome Leo. Venus moving into the sign of Sagittarius shares your fire triplicity. Therefore it's a trine to your sun and that is a glorious opportunity to really demonstrate the sunniest part of your nature. And Venus is very affectionate in the fifth house, very, very warm. What's not to like? Well, if you're in a relationship which tends to be very clingy and there's a lot of psychological stuff going on around control and possessiveness, jealousy, you're really going to be feeling that as you begin this journey. But if there is someone that you really like, you could find yourself drawn towards someone that maybe wouldn't necessarily be your type of person. Maybe you're being compelled in some way towards someone. There's some kind of magnetism that you're going to find to be irresistible because Mercury and Mars, Mars the planet of sex and drive, Mercury in retrograde are together. You could be more impulsive. In recent years, I feel that part of your nature that can take the initiative has been blunted because of Pluto's journey through your sixth house for so long. So you've got almost caught up in sacrificing some of your star quality in order to keep things together, whether it's been at work, around your health, or in being more self-sacrificing for others close to you. But whether you want to demonstrate your talents, your flair, your creativity, Venus influences all of those, or you want to go into this new year or have a very jolly New Year's Eve, you can certainly do it. But I feel that in a long-standing relationship that's got bogged down, if it's depriving you the oxygen to ignite your flame, your fiery flame of passion, you really need to be thinking about whether that's the right time for you. Because with Saturn watered down in Pisces, Neptune very watery in Pisces, this is the sign it rules. So what you need is spark. And if that spark's being denied of you, have a good think about whether this is the right situation for you for the longer term. But if you are single, I think that this can end up being quite an entertaining New Year's Eve for you. Get out, about and enjoy yourself. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Virgo, for you, Venus moving into the fourth house. It's really interesting. The fourth house and Venus can be very much to do with how we want to mould our decorative environment. So if you're hitting the cell, soft furnishings and Stuff like that could be something that really does appeal to you. You already have your ruler in the fourth house, despite in retrograde, and Mars. But this combination means that you could be thinking a lot about where you live, or how you live there, or who with. Particularly if you're in a relationship which isn't working very well. Let's just be really honest about it. The fourth house can be very much to do with security. If you're sticking in something because you're fearful, of not having that security, that's an entirely understandable emotion to have. But equally, Saturn and Neptune could be applying a vice of control to your need to really be freely safe and secure. So, interesting. If you're single, however, could be someone you're going to encounter at a family gathering or with people you know well over New Year's. And if you do like someone, I would be guided very much, not just about how it feels to you, which is obviously the primary thing that we all need to be guided by, but also whether you feel, if it is someone that's of great interest, whether they would actually fit in to your daily world. You don't necessarily want someone who's going to be a shoe in uh, It's good to have sun challenges, and Venus and Sagittarius likes them. But I think you're going to become much more conscious of the emotional sphere in terms of relationships over the next few weeks, whatever type of relationships they are, they are, and whatever your personal status is at the start of this process. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep 
Dive video. Please see the link beneath this video. So Libra, for you, Venus is your ruler and its transition through the sign of Scorpio may have given you a red hot desire to have some excitement around your love life. But you know, even if someone has been really exciting you in that way, what you always need is to be switched on through your mind. And if a person has the kind of grace and a way of, of relating to you that you really feel you like, then the conversation can really take on a marvellous dimension over the next few weeks. You can find yourself chatting absolutely endlessly. If, however, you've had some kind of uh, intense involvement with someone recently, but you're starting to find that there's not an awful lot more to say, then what you mustn't do is just go through it to be dutiful. You need to be mindful of the lessons that Pluto has helped you to gain over the last 15 years of not compromising on what's really right for you in order to keep the peace, which can be one of your faults. And of course I say that as a Libra in Ascendant, so sometimes that need to avoid the confrontation can actually make the issue worse because people then say, well, you didn't tell me, what do you mean you have this issue? What, why are you bringing this up? All these things that your uh, very pleasant nature has been brutally punished by Pluto through those years. But equally, if you can talk to someone, if you can say how you feel, just in little darting ways, the third house is very quick, and you use your knowledge, Sagittarius, uh, your sense of humour, uh, have different angles to approach things can all work brilliantly well what's not to like well just that your nervous energy may still be a little delicate as much as i feel that you will get stuck in and enjoy uh, the turn of the years i think as you go into 2024 uh, however much people are inviting you to do things perhaps even one special person it will all be in some ways be driven by your work demands your practical uh, uh, everyday structure and perhaps also your physical vitality which could still be on the low side because of Saturn and Neptune being in the sixth house. Definitely got an opportunity to be much flirtier though with Venus moving into this area. Why not enjoy it and not worry too much. Enjoy it and see where it goes but don't let anyone take advantage of your good nature. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Scorpio, Venus moving through your sign over the last 25 days, has definitely created some excitement. If you started that period single, it wouldn't be a complete surprise if more than one person has come into your orbit uh, over those weeks. Whether they've stuck around or not is another matter because of that electric energy of Uranus, which is making you probably quite picky about who you will get close, or if you do get close, it's on your terms and your terms only. But you've probably also given yourself some kind of makeover, which has given you more confidence. So as Venus alights in your second solar house, the great news that I can tell you is that she is going to bring you some extra loot over the next 25 days. But just be conscious that because the Saturn's squaring up to Venus, if you're someone who does like a bit of a flutter or a punt, um, or you enjoy any kind of game of chance, it's not the best time to do that really from now until about the 4th of January, because you may not actually get the return that you hope for. Equally, if there is someone that's taken your fancy, uh, you could be in the mood to really spoil them. Lovely, but I don't necessarily think it would make that much difference to how they felt about you. I think you've got to be authentically you, but if you are in, on a really comfortable basis for someone with both Venus and Mars, your traditional ruler, in your second house, get together and eat and drink. And that eating and drinking will then lead to sparks, almost undoubtedly but when it comes to financial decisions don't be too rash um, and if someone close to you is asking for some kind of financial assistance I would also be a little guarded because having Saturn and Neptune in house five relating back to your second house of everyday money someone could use quite 
a lot of heartfelt messages and please I'll pay you back and all this kind of stuff and they may mean it in the moment but whether you'd get your money back is another matter proceed with caution so if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video please see the link beneath this video so Sagittarius Venus moving into your sign is really a good news story because over the last 25 days, I think you may have gone through quite a tough time in terms of trying to understand the psychological dimension of uh, your mode of relating, what you need in your uh, relationships in general. I'm not talking about love only, all sorts of relationships. Some insecurities may have come in, perhaps some past memories may have come up into your consciousness. Perhaps you've lost a bit of self-belief in the way you connect to people or how people value you. Maybe you felt rejected or old rejections have become much more vivid for you. But Venus pitching up in your sign is a green light moment. And right through to the 23rd of January, if ever there was a zodiac sign that could refresh their wardrobe, it's going to be you this year because Venus in the first house really wants you to relaunch yourself. You're coming back into the present. It's fabulous. More than one person can be beaten up after your door. What's not to like? Well, it's just that the complexities aren't quite at an end because the complexities weren't just coming from Venus in the 12th. They were coming from Saturn and Neptune in the 4th. 4th house energy, home emotion. A need for security. The twelfth house can be our insecurities, where we feel marooned, abandoned, all those kind of things. And of course, Mercury in its retrograde and Mars in your sign have been making you much more aware and alert for what you need now, instantly. But those fourth house energies are asking you just to let your shoulders come down a bit, take a breath, stay aware that you have emotional needs. You don't always have to be absolutely on top form you can be a bit suboptimal at times you can also share some vulnerabilities some fears people will still embrace you the right people if you're with someone that you don't feel you can be yourself with there's your answer if you already feel that that's the case you can't be yourself with that's the answer so if you're feeling a bit discombobulated in yourself in general, in terms of your identity, it wouldn't be a surprise, and maybe that is going to prevail a bit into 2024, but you have a great opportunity to rethink, reset and re-go because you've got that enormously wonderful solar eclipse coming uh, in April in the sign of Aries, and you've also got the glorious entrance of Jupiter, your ruler, into your sector of relating which is going to happen on the 25th of may also at the start of june it forges an awesome link with pluto in your third house so the second seven months of next year are going to be really really much more in your favor when it comes to relationships also the glorious solar eclipse of the 2nd of october in your sect sector of sociability so there's lots to go for but I feel that what the stars are asking you to do is really appreciate and assimilate the emotional sphere and not feel you can't do it, that it's somehow uh, seeing you give away your pride or, or, your, or your, uh, your sense of self. That's not true, but you are being challenged a bit. And that could be being something that's playing out in your relationships. But if you're, you know, uh, a free spirit at the moment, then I feel that you can have a lot of fun over the next few weeks. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. Capricorn, so Venus moves into your 12th house, where you've also got the retreat in Mercury and Mars. Quite complex, so as you go into the new year, you're going to have that uh, energy in house 12 competing with the energy in house 3, Saturn, your ruler, and Neptune. They're how you think in your everyday world. The 12th house is all about fear. It can be about abandonment. It can be to do with past involvements. It can be to do with nostalgia. It can be to do with withdrawal. It can be to do with a lack of trust. You can have all the conversations in the world. But if you're feeling that people aren't on the level, that's something you need to act upon. 
And that's really the issue here. Venus in the 12th house could, I am afraid, bring a relationship that's not working to a grinding halt, especially as your ruler Saturn is trapping Venus really hard like a cat. You know, a cat there with its paw on that thing that's trying to move around, that toy. Cat there, on the toy, stopping it moving. And that's a little bit what Saturn's doing to Venus for you now and as you go into the new year. So for the whole of year 2024, if there are any insecurities around a relationship, they could be really, really important to how you go forward. So if you find it very difficult to get the other person to prize them open, that would be a concern. Or is it you who's the one who's very reluctant to actually get in touch with some of the fears and inhibitions and phobias that you may have? You're really being asked to embrace them. We've all got it, we've all got a shadow side. We all have dreams that are challenging at times. If you bring that in, you totally embrace all the bits of you, then that's gonna make you more of a whole person. But then the third house is about quick chat. It's, it's about, in a way, having those sort of text messages and emails, but it's not very emotional. So you're being asked by Venus to be more emotional. And it's also possible that you could make a connection to someone over the next few weeks in a low-key, even clandestine way, because the 12th house is about secret relationships as much as secret enemies. But if there is a chink in any relationship that's close to your world, if someone's not as trustworthy as you would like, it could come up in the next few weeks, unfortunately. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Aquarius, Venus moving into your 11th house, perfect for the time of year we're just moving into. Whether you're someone who does really dive into New Year's Eve in a sort of big way, or someone who likes to see it in quietly, Venus is activating your friendship sector and also that part of your nature that really is good at networking and getting on with lots of different types of people. Venus in the 11th house is rather like Venus in Aquarius, which I have natally. So it's friendly, it can be a little bit uh, detached, um, but certainly it's a good place to be if you do want to join in and, and see in the new year in a celebratory way. I think Saturn, your traditional ruler in a right angle with Venus, is just saying that if you do imbibe, it's probably going to be something you really uh, feel because Neptune, very much to do with imbibing, that's squaring up with Mars impulse and Mercury, uh, the exciting conversation that you have. So. If you are going to uh, have a, a jolly time as you go into the new year, you may want to drink as much water as you possibly can in preparation. Make sure you eat, pace yourself and all those kind of things that I'm going to be trying to do as well. But more seriously, Venus in the 11th house suggests that whatever relationships you've got in your world, celebrate the things you have in common. Because as people, we all have some commonalities. We might like to think, oh, that person is nothing like me, can't, oh, not my cup of tea at all. But actually, do you know, they still get up in the morning, they still go to the loo, they still have breakfast or they don't, whatever. We all have certain very deeply um, dialed in responses to situations. It's our instincts that really come in to make us feel that it's completely unique to us. One of the lovely things about Venus in, in Sagittarius for you is that you could find yourself really th feeling very blessed by the connections you have, even if it's not necessarily very close. Just, you know, all those people, whether it is people you chat to on Facebook or through a hobby group or following a sports team, um, these are things that you can get a lot of community from. So community can be blessed. Where it becomes more challenging is that if you're existing in a community where the values of the other people are just not your values. And that actually could make you feel a, a lot more isolated. But that's one of the great things about the internet. If we find it difficult to get on with the person across the road, there's someone across the pond that we can get on with brilliantly. And that's very reassuring. 
Also, the other thing is that you may find yourself being attracted to someone in your friendship circle. And if you're in a relationship, it's the friendship part of the tie that also can come to life in a really positive way. But when it comes to your long-term finances, what uh, the position of Saturn and Neptune are saying as they apply to Venus, Mars and the Cheetah and Mercury, don't be too rash with money in the short term. See how things have, are evolving if things have been a bit tight over the next few weeks. So if you've yet to watch your year 2024 deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. So Pisces, Venus moving into Sagittarius for you, it's about knowledge of course, but it can be about travel, but it could be travel linked to work for you. The 10th house is where we connect to the wider world. Or it could be that you're going to have an interview, do a presentation, speak to a line manager, and you're going to need to use your powers of diplomacy, but if you can embrace them, it actually means that someone can really start to become much more conscious of what you have to offer. But soft power is just as important as saying, I really want recognition, which is what Mars in Sagittarius is asking for you at the moment. And of course, Mercury is in retrograde, so there has perhaps been some uncertainty, perhaps something's been off on, you're not sure. Um, Venus is suggesting if you do meet somebody, have an interview uh, or connect, that you do try to approach things with that sensitivity to what they want, because the 10th house is the established order. So the more you're flexing to that, the better it will be. If you're thinking, no, this is who I am, Saturn in Pisces, and everyone else can dance to my tune, you could be in for a little bit of a bruise in time. So it's time to use your mutability, your flexibility, and just flow a little bit. So if someone wants something slightly different to what you're offering, try to find a way to accommodate that if it gives you some traction longer term in the situation. So in other words, I think you need to be tactical professionally. But the 10th house can also relate to personal relationships. It could be a time when you and yours start to think more seriously about perhaps moving in together, getting you know into a a committed tie, perhaps even get in spliced. It just depends on your personal preferences because the 10th house really is something that's reaching a culmination point. So a relationship could become more serious for you uh, through to the 23rd of January. Equally, if you are seeing somebody, it may be possible that your parents or the people that you know you respect the most don't necessarily instantly click with your love interest. And that's simply because maybe they just don't understand who this person is. Maybe there's a little bit of fear that's around the situation. Maybe it's your fear that's getting in the way. And all of this will start to unravel more as Mercury clears the retrograde on the 2nd of January, but also comes out of the square with Neptune on the 12th. Obviously, Mercury then moves into Capricorn, your sector of long-term plans on the 14th and then Venus moves into Capricorn on the 23rd. So you'll be much clearer by about the third week of January if there is someone that you really think a lot of and it's not quite going in the way you want. Keep the patience going, but most of all, keep the diplomacy going too. Another thing with Venus in the 10th house, you could find yourself attracted to someone from a completely different age group a different background. You could meet someone at work or through a professional organisation. All those things are possible too. It's been a real pleasure going through Venus and Sagittarius with you. Please don't forget to check out that year 2024 deep dive individual forecast for each sign beneath this video or order your personal forecast for the year ahead based on your unique birth data. No two charts the same. In my special package, 30% off, plus you'll also get your Chinese, Indian and Zodiac forecast booklets free of charge. Please see the link below.